Hey everyone. So I wanted to take uh, some time today to talk about a very real issue, a very real struggle that many people go through uh, and some tips and tricks that might be useful in overcoming it. And that's overcoming procrastination. Procrastination is something that is so ubiquitous, something that so many people struggle with it. In fact, in some studies, 95% of people who were questioned admitted to putting off certain work. And so we all find ways and different types of work that we like to procrastinate on, that we are inclined to procrastinate on. And the concept of procrastination itself is completely illogical. It's something on a neurological level, it's not even slightly logical. It's a result of the emotional part of your brain, the limbic system, strong arming the reasonable, the rational part of your brain for that particular time. And that's what, that's what allows you to sort of check your Facebook instead of doing the project or whatever it is that you're supposed to be working on. This is the part of the brain that sort of swamps you for that particular moment. And there are different approaches as to what causes uh, what causes procrastination, different approaches also as far as how to deal with it, how to overcome it. But we're going to take a look at some of those and also talk about some of the advice that our sages uh, in Torah tradition give to the one who is inclined to procrastinate, which is basically all of us at, at some point or another, depending on what the task is. Okay, and so the, the truth of the matter is, is this is actually something that is indirectly uh, addressed in the very first Mishnah in the Talmud. The very first Mishnah uh, talks about the recital of the Shema. And when, when you're reciting the evening Shema, when is the latest time that you still fulfill the mitzvah, or that you still fulfill the commandment of reciting the Shema? And the Chachamim, the opinion of the Chachamim, of the sages, is that you should go only until midnight. Meaning, the reality is, is that you have until dawn, but the, the sages say that you really have only until midnight. And so, if you're allowed to say it until dawn, why do the sages say only recite it until midnight? In order to distance a person, a person from sin. So maybe the best way, by the way, to sort of realize, to appreciate how widespread the challenge of procrastination is, is by the dozens of books, the dozens of titles that pop up uh, every year in the bookstores, uh, the dozens, or not dozens, hundreds and hundreds of of uh, results that will pop up if you type it into a search engine, uh, the, the overcoming procrastination or whatever it is, you will find uh, a, basically an unlimited supply of, of resources or of suggestions that are addressing this topic. And you can tell how, how ubiquitous an issue is with the amount of results that, that come and the amount of articles that are written and, and, and so forth. So in addition to these books and to these internet searches, there are workbooks, there are handbooks, there are funny books, there are academic books, there are books for clients, there are books for clinicians. So in short, it's, it's a safe bet that anyone watching this video right now either does or knows somebody who struggles with procrastination. Maybe, in fact, you're watching this video because you're procrastinating on something else. So the, the idea is that it, this is something that everyone uh, more or less uh, struggles with to some degree uh, at some point or another. So clearly, despite the enormous interest uh, in breaking the patterns of procrastination, it's a habit that's not easily broken. It's a habit that it isn't easily broken. It's something that, that uh, it takes a lot of effort. So procrastination, as far as the word is concerned, is derived from the Latin word, uh, words uh, pro, which means forward, and crastinus, which means tomorrow. And it generally refers to the tendency that a person has to delay or to postpone uh, completing any task. Now, why do people procrastinate? What's the reason for it? So there are various explanations that are that are offered, ranging from uh, 
personal characteristics or habits that a, the person has as an individual to features of the task itself that the, the features of the task itself that the person wants to avoid to explanations based on reward and punishment for completing or for not completing that particular task and so whatever the case may be uh we again we see that it's something that um that that many struggle with and, and it's been said that procrastination is the mechanism uh, that it's the mechanism for coping with the anxiety associated with starting or completing any task uh, or decision and so this is a, a way in which a person can deal with the anxiety that the task uh, sort of uh, puts their way and uh, this is one of the ways in which it's viewed. So in other words, a person experiences a level of stress when they think about having to do something, and procrastination provides that person a way out. Right? I just won't do it. I'll just put it off till later. So instead of, the ex so instead of experiencing the anxiety of whatever that task is meant to be, uh, he can choose to push it off until, he can push off the job until later. And when he makes that choice, or she makes that choice, he experiences a momentary relief. There's a calm, there's a, for, for, just for the moment. And, and it stands to reason that the greater the anxiety about the job, e uh, either because of the what's at stake, right, like uh, school or work, it's a project that you have to do, or because of the task itself, it's boring or difficult. So the, the, greater, the, the greater the anxiety that the project uh, creates that you have to do, the greater the relief that a person experiences when you push it off until later. So in modern times, where we have phones and computers and all sorts of different uh, easily accessible distractions, the ease in which a person can procrastinate makes the challenge even more likely. So back in the day, it was one, it was one degree of challenge, which is fine, and that now that there are more things to distract us with, so a person who's not, e not even very prone to procrastination has an easier time procrastinating just because we have so many gizmos and gadgets and shiny objects that a person can run after. So in short, procrastination can be seen as a failure of self-regulation, as it happens uh, when we're unable or unwilling to push off uh, or push through uh, our emotions as they gain intensity. And instead, what we do is we choose the escape or the distraction. So we, we, want, we go, want to go down the escape hatch uh, of a distraction. Instead, we avoid, rather than avoiding the difficult emotions, the anxiety that starting this project or being involved with this project create in us. So of course, procrastination, uh, like many other things, isn't, doesn't necessarily, uh, it's not all bad per se. Uh, it could be helpful to push off some tasks in life be, uh, that when it, when life becomes overwhelming, right? Imagine imagine what life would look like if we felt that we had to take care of all of our responsibilities immediately. Right? There is a place for a certain degree of pro procrastination or organization. Even the, the pressure would be unbearable if we felt that every activity or every pro project or everything that we have to do must be done immediately. That's be very stressful. And so there, there are there's a certain degree of positivity that can come out of procrastination. However, when procrastination becomes the norm in a person's life, what happens is it negatively affects the person's productivity. And so we don't want that in a person that procrastination becomes the norm and that overall they become a, a very unproductive uh, person overall. And so how can we prevent procrastination or the negative effects, the negative outcomes that come from procrastination? So one of the, one advice, one bit of advice that is given not only in uh, contemporary uh, procrastination books and workshops and whatnot, but also given by our sages, is the concept of just do it, just get started, figure out some way to get started. Our sages well understood people's inclination towards procrastination. We find many statements that discourage delaying uh, the performance of a mitzvah, for example. So it says in the Mechilta and Shabbos, 
uh, excuse me, the Mechilta and Shmois, that uh, if a mitzvah, if a mitzvah, be, if a mitzvah comes to your hands, you shouldn't delay in observing it. Meaning, if you have the opportunity to do a mitzvah, do the mitzvah. Okay. So again, when the opportunity comes, you do it right away. You don't, you don't wait. You don't push it off. You do it right away. And another, uh, another uh, uh, famous line or famous phrase uh, that's that's brought from the Gemara and Psachim, the Talmud and Psachim, that the Zrizim, the the vigilant person, are early in the performance of the mitzvahs. Right, a vigilant person is early in the performance of the mitzvah, meaning that that again we should seek the first opportunity in doing what we need to do. And and contemporary contemporary experts also suggest the same sort of just do it now attitude. Just do it. Just just get started. Right here here it is. It's presenting itself to you. Just do it. And so. How, how do you do that? Physically, th- this is what some of the contemporary writers will say. They, they say physically, you put yourself in a position, you physically, to start. Right? You put the work in front of you, whatever it is. You, you put yourself in a physical position to start, and then you sit there for a minute. And you'll feel ridiculous if you don't get started. You just sit there with the work in front of you. you pen is in hand, paper in front of you. And you just sit there, and you're going to feel ridiculous if you don't get started. Again, now that that is some of the uh, that are, that's that's what's written by some of the contemporary authors on this particular subject. Our sages' statement, uh, our, our sages when they discuss it, don't add that that final clause that a person is going to be motivated because they're going to feel ridiculous if they don't start. But the idea that a person can make an intentional choice. To simply do something instead of delaying it seems to be the theme that we find in various rabbinic statements about being vigilant and alacritous in doing the things that we need to do. So an example of when the principle of just do it, just just get started, uh, is at play relates to Torah study. So researchers have shown that one of the ways, one of the one of the scenarios, one of the conditions that procrastination becomes more likely, contributes to procrastination becoming a thing, uh, is when the task is vague and abstract. If the task that we're meant to do, we don't, if we don't have a clear model, if it's not clearly laid out what or how or, or the parameters of how this thing is supposed to be completed, the more vague the project, the more likely procrastination is. And so it's interesting that when it comes to Torah study, we find, we find this particular uh, idea. Because consider some of the laws that are related, that pertain to Torah study. The, the Mishnah lists Torah study as a mitzvah that doesn't have a defined quantity, right? There's no maximum. It's not like, well, you maxed out on your time for Torah study today, and so um, you know you, you, you've, you've completed, you finished. So it, it's not necessarily clear that a person has fulfilled their obligation for Torah study to the fullest extent on any particular day. Right, it's kind of vague. It's well, how much time am I supposed to be studying Torah today? Well, the, the time, the quantity of time is is a little bit is a little bit obscure. And also, there are no clear instructions also regarding the, the what the what the person is meant to study. In fact, the Gemara cites the opinion of Rebbe and Rava as ruling that uh, a person, as far as what they should select as their course of study, that a person should learn the topics that pique their interest. So that, that's from the Gemara and Avayda Zara. So, so there, are, there are ideas within the context of even to the study of Torah which are, are sort of vague. The, the, the quantity, the amount of time where I fulfilled the mitzvah today, it's kind of vague. The subject matter, kind of vague. Uh, one, one thing uh, that, I, that I find when speaking to yeshiva students as well is that sometimes there's no, there's no set track over the course of the year, that they learn a mimer, they learn a discourse over here, they learn this over here, uh, and it's all the sort of disjointed things. And at the end of the year, they look back and they kind of think, like, well, like, what did I, what did, I, what did I learn? What did I accomplish? Because there was no like set track that they were working towards personally, and that that can sometimes cause procrastination for the future. It's 
again, it's it's very vague. It's there's not there's not if there's not a sense of accomplishment or a knowledge of even when I have a when I have accomplished what I need to accomplish, it, it becomes more likely that the person will procrastinate in what they're doing. So Torah study contains a, a number of of other elements as well that make procrastination more likely. So in, in addition. In addition to the, 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 the cognitive element or the, the intellectual effort that's required to even have a basic mastery of the Torah or the Talmudic texts, the, the contemporary studies have also shown that the fear of failure, uh, uh, perfectionism, uh, or, or perceived lack of self-efficacy, that you don't believe in yourself, are all associated also with procrastination. So if you think to yourself that you are... Uh, not cut out for uh, for Torah study or for whatever the task may be, or you're a perfectionist, right? And you you're not going to be satisfied until it's absolutely perfect, which it which it probably never will be. So you're not even going to want to start because these things are are thing are, are are items that add to the the reason that a person would want to procrastinate in doing them. Well, if it's never going to be perfect, if I'm a perfectionist, if it's never going to be perfect, then I don't want to get started. And so a person, you, we can imagine that someone who approaches Torah study might face these challenges as he realizes the enormity of the task in gaining mastery over such, a, such material is, is uh, that, that there's so much to it. And given all these potential areas of uncertainty, Regarding the performance of a mitzvah, as well as the potentially overwhelming uh, nature that's expected in the mastery in, uh, to achieve in Torah study, you could see how a person might uh, procrastinate. And as the Rambam describes, there's there's an interesting uh, there's an interesting idea brought in the, the Rambam in Hilchas Tamatera, the laws of Torah study. The Rambam describes gaining mastery of Torah in a very sort of rigorous way. It says that the word of the the word of Torah will not permanently be acquired by a person who applies himself feebly to attain them. And he won't it, it won't and it also won't be attained by those who study amid pleasure with an abundance of food and drink in front of them. Rather, a person has to give up his life for them. In other words, that success in Torah means a person has to de dedicate their life to it. Not just, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a snack and I'll read something. It's something that a person's constantly straining his body to the point of discomfort, says the Rambam. Without, gaining sleep, without granting sleep to his eyes or slumber to his eyelids. Now, that's a lot of effort. That's a lot of work. And like we said, psychologically speaking, it's exactly this feature of Torah study that might make it more likely for someone to avoid starting. That person might feel overwhelmed by the commitment that's required to achieve any sort of success and choose that, you know what, I'm not even going to try. They might have fear of failure. They might have perfectionism. might have so low self-efficacy. The Rambam, based on Perkei Avos, based on a Mishnah in the ethics of our fathers, offers the following just-do-it type of attitude, rec the recommendation for combating this problem. He says in Hilchus Talmud Torah, the Laws of Torah Study, uh, chapter 3, uh, Halacha 7, he says, make your work secondary and your Torah study in a fixed manner. Meaning, set up a time for Torah study. Don't say, when I have free time, I'll study, for perhaps you'll never have free time. In other words, in order for you to be successful in engaging at Torah study, the Rambam suggests, set a time. Make it, make it a specific time in your day. Make it a fixed matter that no matter what, at this time of day, or whatever it is, uh, I'm going to study this particular area of Torah or uh, perhaps with this particular person or whatever it is, uh, and make the commitment already sort of etched in your day, right? Just do it, right? No matter what, no matter how you feel, if you're in the mood, if you're not in the mood, just do it. So it's that just do it attitude that's not only effective with combating uh, some of the procrastination that may be associated with Torah study, but with 
all sorts of areas of procrastination in our life because a, a lot of the other areas of procrastination in our life may come from the same place inside as our uh, desire to procrastinate when it comes to things like Torah study. So the just do it attitude, the just start it attitude is a good first step in a person who's struggling with with procrastination. Okay. So in other words, make an intentful, right? Make an intentful conscious decision to combat the urge to avoid Torah study and just do it. Just start. Just get started. Pick, pick a specific topic that you like, pick a specific safer, uh, a specific book that you want to go through. Uh, whatever it is, make a, set it down, make it clear, and just do it. Just get started. And also, another, another tip that Chazal, that our sages have suggested to us, uh, is, uh, is to give us the attitude of do it sooner. Despite the number, the, 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 the many, the uh, comments that our sages have uh, that in, that are encouraging potential procrastinators to just do it. It's clear that in, that this um, that uh, that's not always sufficient. That's not always it's not always enough just to say just just do it just start. Okay, so it's fitting that in the Talmud's opening in the Talmud's opening Mishnah, Chazal, our sages, offer an additional method. To reducing procrastination, which is the imposition of costly, albeit artificial, deadlines. Make an artificial deadline for yourself. Okay, Robin Gamliel said that uh, said whenever the sages say until midnight. This is fr this is uh, from the Talmudic text, uh, uh, based on based on the Mishnah. So in in the description of when the recital of the Shema should be, this this is some of the other uh, ideas that are brought out. Raman Gamliel said, whenever the sages say until midnight, the precept may be performed until dawn comes up, right? It means it actually lasts until dawn. So why then did the sages say until midnight? In order to keep a person far from transgression, right? To keep a person far from sin. So Rashi, uh, the, the same medieval sage, the fa primary commentator on the Talmud, says regarding Kriyat Shema, regarding the recital of the Shema, they said this, in order to urge, right, Lazarus, in order to urge a person so that he will not say, I still have more time. And as a result, the daybreak will come and he will have missed the time. Because, again, the, our sages know that a person's inclination to say, well, I have more time, I'll just, I'll just do it later. They know us. They know where our struggles are. So there are, there are a few important ideas that come from this Mishnah and from Rashi's commentary. First, according to Rashi, it was the need, it was the need to, count, to counter the tendency for a person to procrastinate, namely to postpone the fulfillment of a, the mitzvah of Kriyat Shema that compelled Chazal, that compelled the sages to institute a new deadline for completing the requirement. Okay, so it was based on procrastination that our sages said not only until midnight. That's number one. That's the number one thing that comes out of the first Mishnah. Also, in this instance, our sages' method for solving the problem of procrastination is to set a new deadline for completing the requirement. Set a new deadline for completing what you got to do. The effectiveness of this strategy of making for yourself a deadline has been confirmed also in recent psychological literature. In one study of college students that was that was taken, researchers found that those those college students who had artificial deadlines made fewer errors in their work and they were more likely to complete their tasks on time. So making an artificial deadline for yourself, I need to uh, this needs to be finished by the end of the week, by the end of the month, whatever it is, Making an artificial deadline for yourself is also helpful in the completion of the process. So why is moving the deadline, why, why is it that moving the deadline 
up might be helpful in this all in this whole situation and this helping for procrastination so one likely possibility of why setting an artificial deadline is because that the increased anxiety a slight increase in anxiety or pressure actually motivates a person to to act so once you start or once you're able to start and you put an artificial deadline like i gotta finish this by friday or whatever it is that bit of anxiety that you're giving yourself willingly it creates enough of an anxiety that motivates you to perform the act and so although for some people you know raising their emotional anxiety raising the emotional intensity can cause psychological paralysis for most people once a deadline is imminent once you've set a deadline for yourself we're more focused and we're more motivated to start and complete the job so, so this idea is also consistent, by the way, with, with the long-observed psychological principle that the greater the, um, the greater the distance in time of an event, meaning if you have longer time in front of you to do something, the less that that event is going to motivate your current behavior. You ever in school and the, and the teacher's like, oh, that's going to be due in nine months. You're like, all right, I'm not going to think about that until eight months and 28 days from now. You know, so the longer something is in front of you, temporally, right, it, in, on the timeline in front of you, the, the farther it is in front of you, the less likely it's going to affect your behavior today or right now. By moving the timeline forward for reciting the Shema, in, in, right, in this particular Mishnah, Chazal, our sages, have increased the pressure of the deadline in the person's mind and reduce the likelihood of the missing the time due to procrastination. So that's that is a that is a very that is a very real and very interesting uh, thing to think about when a person comes to the challenge of procrastination in their life. Uh, some other things that a person may want to do are to are to uh, try to eliminate distractions. Now, when it comes time to do a task, put your phone on the charger in the other room. Do what you can do to minimize the amount of distractions that you might have. Uh, also, some things to do that some things that might be interesting to do beforehand are when you have a task that's really sort of annoying, to think of some of the positive gain that you're going to be getting from it. And that that itself, if you can think of a positive angle within the situation itself, that might be helpful in getting started in doing it. So, for example, uh, one thing that I, that I like to put off is cleaning the garage. It's just, it, you know, my kids get to it and they're dress-up stuff is everywhere and uh, everything becomes all disorganized and it's just stu it just gets to a point sometimes where there's just stuff everywhere. But I also, personally, I like the feel of a clean room, of, an, of, of a room that's, you know, that's nice and neat, even if, if even the garage, even if it's a room that we're not going into all the time. I, I, I personally still like the idea of walking into a clean and neat garage. So I, I can when the opportunity comes to clean out the garage, again, it's not an activity that I look forward to, but it's every once in a while it's something that's got to be done. And the part that sort of motivates me in, in getting started is, well, I, I do enjoy, I don't enjoy cleaning the garage, but I enjoy the feeling of walking into a clean room, a neat room, and sort of knowing where everything is and everything like that. And so if you can think of a positive element that you are, that you enjoy or that you're going to gain from it, that's something else that's also helpful in getting started. So people, people uh, among, the, among the difficulties that people have, and some, of, some people who, who speak with me uh, uh, on, a, on, a, on a regular basis about uh, their uh, about, uh, different uh, life coaching issues and whatnot struggles that they have, particularly those who are in academic settings. Uh, the, the, one of the struggles, one of the common difficulties uh, is, is the trouble in starting and completing a task, pushing off important things for the last minute, the tendency to push off the necessary work. Uh, it might be related to, again, like we've said, it might sometimes be related to other difficulties, uh, difficulties with attention, right? ADHD, uh, challenges man managing their anxiety or other disruptive things that are distracting uh, their emotional states in their life, various life circumstances that make uh, starting a particular thing or completing a task something particularly difficult. So the impact of the procrastination is real. Uh, as people sometimes make less productive or less less quality in their work 
uh, and they fail to get things done by deadlines, uh, those who struggle with procrastination. So it's something that needs to be dealt with, needs to be addressed, and how each person does it in their own life is is going to be different. There's not, amongst, amongst the writings of our sages, there's not a one-size-fits-all uh, solution because people are different. The task at hand is different. The way people deal with the task at hand is different. Sometimes the sometimes it's because of vagueness. Sometimes it's because of boring, boringness. Sometimes it's because of all all sorts of other things. The the person and the task is different, and each person sort of needs to work on themselves or, or work with somebody to sort of uh, make clear strategies. And one of, one of the things that's that's really important to do. Uh, is to is to not wait until an opportunity, not wait until an actual task comes up to try to figure out how to deal with the procrastination. Instead of searching for a solution in the midst of a, of a panic, oh, I got to get this done. How am I going to do this? Well, let, now, now let me think of how to get past procrastination. I often work with people to be mindful of the situations that are upcoming in their life. Uh, in which they are likely to procrastinate on. And then so this sort of awareness provides the opportunity to come up with the plan before the intensity of the situation, before intensity builds uh, in, in completing the task, and allows the person to consider with a clearer head the strategies that are likely to be most effective. So we share the challenges of procrastination in, in, to one degree or another, in one task or another, uh, and generations before us also struggled with this, spanning for thousands of years, and developing skills for managing uh, these uh, tendencies towards procrastination are also varied and also something that we share with every human that has ever lived. Uh, so taking guidance from the sages, uh, as, we, as we've got a glimpse of today, can help us be more productive, live, live more productive and meaningful lives uh, as servants of Hashem, and uh, enlighten and that, and empower our lives in in every which way we find ourselves, be it our work, be it our family life, be it our just physical dwelling place, um, ultimately making the world into a dwelling place for Hashem. Uh, this is all done through combating one's procrastination. So I hope to uh, I hope to speak with all of you soon and have a wonderful spiritual spiritually uplifting rest of your day. Take care.